Greetings, Unsettled Souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Um, I want to thank everyone that has been so helpful during the uh, family emergency that we had. For those of you who are new to the show, my father just passed. It was a week ago tonight. Um, thank you, Cindy and Valerie and Dave and all. It's too many people to name on run out of showtime. Thank you so much. I do want to say this. Special thanks to the Arcadia Grill, who was the first, along with the charity uh, connection, to get a hold of us to help us for this. And uh, we had them cater his uh, uh, gathering after his funeral. And from now, all the way to the end of January, The Correct Views is proudly brought to you by the Arcadia Grill. That doesn't mean that they always agree with everything that I say. It means that they are an awesome place and a uh, proponent of free speech, obviously. All right, guys, here we go. Natural News' six largest pesticide corporations funding effort to try to defeat GMO labeling Proposition 37. From Natural News, J.D. Hayes. It shouldn't, it would, yeah, there you go. I'm coming back in style, ain't I? And what should probably surprise no one who has been following the Proposition 37 issue, a California proposal that would require the ingredients in all GM, GM foods to be labeled, the so-called Big Six Pesticide Corporations have become the movement's main opponents. Now, for those of you that haven't followed this, GMO, Genetically Modified Organisms, or a GME, a Genetically Engineered, Genetically Modified or Engineered, what they do is there are pesticides, and for those of you Top 40 fans, that means kills bugs. There are pesticides in the food. How much? Um, it is guessed that Ma, how, many, how much Monsanto owns here. Of uh, In all, Monsanto alone controls 23% of the world's seed market. Now, 23% of the seeds have poison in them that kill bugs. Um, somebody mentioned to me um, in the last week that they live on a farm and that the regular crops are smaller than the GMO crops, and he was saying that it was wonderful. Oh, that's not wonderful. I would be much bigger if I took steroids, and if somebody ate me, it would be toxic. Um, plus, the cross-pollinization that is a, a, a possibility happening there could mean that the non-GMO will become GMO within a generation or two of, uh, not our generation, the crops. So, they're fighting in California, and that would be the uh, Proposition 37, to be able to label so that you at least know what you're eating. And uh, the person that I was discussing this with agreed with me that you should at least know what you're eating. And this is from someone who thinks that GMO was a good idea. So, I mean, even people that disagree with me agree that we should know that it's in there. The Big Six, Monsanto, BASF, Bayer, Dow, DuPart, and Syngenta far away dominate the global seed and pesticide markets. While they've all paid at least $2 million, Monsanto contributed more than $7 million. They donated this money so that Californians would not even be allowed to know what's in their food. They don't even want you to know. They're not talking about banning it. They don't even want to let you know it's in there. And that is ridiculous. And that is genocidal. Um, I am happy about this. This is from Natural Society. Uh, continuing with this. And I told people I was going to be on. I've been familiar with eugenics and the poisoning that's been going on with us for a long, long, long time. And uh, so at one point, my, my own dad thought I was nuts. And then he, some things noticed him. And uh, I don't want to harp on it, but again, he is a man who died of gallbladder liver cancer and was a non-drinker. And I am convinced, and the data that has convinced me, it's not me just lashing out randomly, what is in our food is killing us. That's how non-drinkers die of liver cancer. And this is great. India may ban GMO crop field trials for 10 years. That's beautiful news. 
hundreds of Indians in India, not Columbus's India, will be living nice, cancer-free lives. They'll be able to reproduce with their own people better because they're getting this food out of their country. It has been a devastating month for Monsanto as nations around the globe continue to enact bans and restraints on the company's genetically modified crop varieties. India, the same country that hit Monsanto with biopiracy charges for patenting life on the planet, in the latest, is the latest nation to take a stand. The nation's new expert com committee appointed by the Supreme Court of India is now calling upon the Indian government to enact a 10-year ban on all GMO crop field trials for the next 10 years. The law would, I'm just going to go on because it's such good news. The new law would forbid any biotech agencies from testing their latest GMO crop poison on Indian soil, therefore preventing the serious issue of contamination and environmental damage. Um, this is what we need to be doing in this country. If you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, put in Monsanto rats. Look at the pictures. I know a lot of people can't handle the big words because they listen to Lady Gaga all day. Monsanto rats. Bingo. Um, the pictures will say uh, more than uh, more words than I've ever spoken in my life. Um, this is from Washington's blog, and this is terrible. Fukushima update unit four is sinking unevenly. The spent fuel pool at Fukushima number four is the on top of the short-term threat to humanity list and is a national security issue for America. As such, it is disturbing news that the ground beneath Unit 4 is sinking. Okay, friends. This is a nuclear reactor. For those of you that said it's a candle, I'm gonna... This is a nuclear reactor, and this is the ground. This nuclear reactor has nothing under it but the ground, and let's say down here is water. The ground is sinking. It's going to sink into the water. What happens when poison nuclear waste hits water? The water supply becomes poisonous. Look at the movie Silkwood and multiply that times about 5 million. Specifically, Unit 4 sunk 36 inches right after the earthquake in March 11th of, uh, oh, of 11 and has sunk another 30 inches since then. Moreover, Unit 4 is sinking unevenly and the building may be tilting. Now there are things called um, spent fuel rods and if it doesn't sink evenly, well it might tip. So now you get an atmosphere full of poison and uh, for those of you that haven't followed it, statistically already it would have been better, minus the initial blast of course, it would have been better for the people of Japan if they would have uh, unfortunately gotten involved in a nuclear altercation of some kind, as opposed to the amount of radiation that has already leaked from Fukushima. If this fuel pool falls over, and look it up for those of you that don't know me, because you're going to say the long-haired guy is nuts, no. If that falls over, you may not be able to live in the northern hemisphere anymore. Bye-bye, America. Bye-bye, Canada. Bye-bye, Japan and Russia. Why do you think so many people are buying land in uh, south, south of the equator? And uh, why do they not have any nuke plants down there? There is a reason for that. An international coalition of nuclear scientists and nonprofit groups are calling for the UN to coordinate a multinational effort to stabilize these pools. Guys, if they don't get these under control and do so quickly, mass exit, mass extinction, people. Please look this stuff up. It's why I'm sitting here talking into this camera. Last thing I want to say, once again, Correct Views are brought to you proudly by the Arcadia Grill. Absolutely delicious food. Spaghetti, meatballs, the fairest of drink prices, and they pour them kindly. Go to the Arcadia Grill on the Court Avenue. Um, it's from the economic collapse, Michael Snyder. Obama and Romney both favor one world economic system that kills American jobs. I'm not going to read this. I, I told you where it was from because it's important enough for you to read it. It's a very long article. But there's something in it, and you'll see when you read it. 
um, or just take my word for it, I'm not here to lie to you, both Obama and Romney are in favor of outsourcing. Free trade is the name that they give it. Well, that's great. Um, if I called evil pumpkin pie, does that make it any less evil? No. Therefore, whenever you hear free trade, what they're talking about doing is sending our products overseas and our jobs overseas, but we have to spend more when it comes back. That is an absolute fact. Back in 1950, the population of this country was less than half of what it is now, and yet there were more Americans working in manufacturing back in 1950 than there are today. The Chinese slap huge tariffs on many of our goods. They manipulate currency rates to make sure that the U.S. companies cannot compete. They steal our intellectual property, and they deeply subsidize their own business. This has been going on and on and on, and nobody wants to do anything about it. Nobody wants to say that Obama has done just as bad as George W. Bush, and that is true in almost every way. In closing, one of the best paragraphs you saw me widgeting down here trying to get. It seems to me, the author writes, that if you crack down on nations that are cheating, such as China, imposed a system of common sense tariffs and cut the corporate tax rate to a level more consistent with the rest of the world, that you could get a lot of the jobs that Obama said are never coming back to the country back by the end of the year. Yep, that there is how you fix it. Talk about the correct views. That says it all, friends. Good night. God bless. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for everything you did during this time of absolute nightmare in my family. And uh, the show is back up and running, and you'll be seeing more posts. Good night. God bless.